my friends. My name is Steph Turner Busiel, but my students at Whittier Elementary call me Miss Steph, and I'm their performing arts teacher. I want to give a little shout out to my wildcats. Go wildcats! Paws up, my friends! We're going to be actors today, and actors are people who play characters. We're going to work on the tool of an actor's voice. All you need for today's lesson are some active listening ears. Do you have those? I think you do. An awesome imagination. Do you have that? I think you probably do. And an open space to either move in or make big or little shapes with your bodies in, depending on what character you're trying to play today. Now, an actor's voice is a super important part of playing a character. And it's really only one of those parts because an actor has their instrument with them at all times, right? We have our bodies and we have our facial expressions. But the cool thing about the voice is that we can change it any way we want. We could change the pitch of our voice to really, really high, like if we're playing a little baby or something like that, or maybe a cricket or a small creature. Or we can change it to really, really, really low, like when we're playing Grumpy Grandma, right? So that's the pitch of our voice. We can also change the volume or the dynamics of our voice. So if we are going to play somebody who's super, super playing somebody who's really, really shy and maybe puts their head inside of their jacket, we might want to get really, really quiet with our dynamics and our voice. That's why SpongeBob SquarePants sounds a little bit different than Harry Potter because of all the different ways that they can use their voices, the pitch, the volume, but it's also important to understand that a character's voice is gonna tell how that character is feeling. And we're gonna learn a big college word today. Now, those are words that are super big and sometimes are only used in college, but you guys are so smart. I know that I can teach them to you now. This big college word, are you ready? Intonation. Intonation is how we say things rather than what we say. Without intonation, we would all sound like robots because our voices would be very monotone and we wouldn't show anything different. That's why lots of times you'll hear grown-ups talk about watching your tone because you might say something one way, like, okay, I heard you, mom, rather than, oh, okay, I heard you, mom, right? It's all about your tone, your intonation. Let's try this together. I'm gonna ask you a question, and we're gonna just use the words, are you kidding me? Question mark, right? A pretty easy question. But we're gonna start off by saying it like, you just won the biggest prize in the world and you're super duper surprised. And it might sound something like this. Are you kidding me? <gasps> now I want you to try. Say, are you kidding me? Like maybe you just won something really big. Ready? One, two, three, go. Excellent. I want you to try, are you kidding me? Those words, like you're a really, really annoyed teenager. Maybe some of you are living in houses with annoyed teenagers right now, so you kind of know what they sound like, right? Let's try that. It might sound like me, right? I'm gonna try my character voice first. Ugh. Are you kidding me? Now you try, ready? One, two, three, go. See, now you're getting the hang of it. Let's try one more. I want you to try this like, 
maybe you just lost something that's super important to you. Like you just lost a game or something and you're really, really mad, right? Let's try that. It might sound like this. One, two, three. Are you kidding me? Now you try. Ready? One, two, three, go. See? Intonation is the magic. It's the intention in your voice, and it also is what shows the feeling or the emotion. So when your grown-ups say, watch your tone, now you know exactly what they're talking about. Today, we're going to read the book, Hawaii Fawad Niwat. Now, I love this book because it has so many great characters. Some of them are funny. Some of them are shy. But it's a book that shows a lot of feelings and it gives us as actors a lot of opportunities to try all kinds of different character voices. I'm gonna read the book first, all the way through. And you can hear how I do some of the characters from the book and how I can use my intonation to show how that character is feeling through my voice. And then we'll go back and I'm gonna show some of the pictures and the dialogue, and you're gonna to try to do it on your own. With your voice, showing your character with your voice, with your body, maybe even your facial expression. Hawaii Fawadni Wet by Helen Luster, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger, and published by Houghton Mifflin Books. Poor Wadney, Wadney Wet. His real name was Rodney Rat, but he couldn't pronounce his R's. And to make matters worse, he was a rodent, a rodent. What's your name, Wadney? Asked the other rodents. Wadney Wat, whispered Wadney. <laughs> What's another name for Bunny? They asked knowingly. Wabbit, he mumbled. And how does a train travel? They winked at each other. A twain travels on twain tracks, Wadney replied miserably. All of this teasing day in and day out made Wadney the shyest rodent in his elementary school. His squeak could barely be heard in class. He gnawed his lunch alone. And while the other rodents scurried and scooted about at recess, Wadney hid inside his jacket. Poor Wadney. He's very shy. Has anybody ever felt really shy before? Yeah, because he was embarrassed maybe. Then one day, as the rodents were taking turns doing wheelies, a new rodent, a very large rodent, barged into the classroom and announced, my name is Camilla Capybara. I'm bigger than any of you. I'm meaner than any of you, and I'm smarter than any of you. She then added, so there. You don't sound very nice to me. With that, she accidentally, on purpose, elbowed an ear, bumped two noses, stepped on three tails, and lay down on a desk. Fur prickled in fear through the classroom. She sure was bigger than any of them. She sure looked meaner than any of them. Was she smarter than any of them? Hmm, what do you think? What's two plus two? Asked Miss Fuzzleworth. Four, shouted Camilla Capybara without even bothering to raise her paw. Her paw. And furthermore, four plus four is eight, eight plus eight is 16, and 243 plus 125 is 368. 
Later, when Miss Fuddleworth asked, What's the capital of? Camilla interrupted, New York, Albany, population 295,594. And during science, in answer to the question, what part of the plant is below the ground? Camilla Capybara danced on her desk and sang, Root, root, rooty, toot, toot. Yep, thought all the other rodents. She's smarter than we are, too. They felt very uncomfortable. Hmm. Every afternoon, just before the final recess, Mrs. Fuzzleworth drew a name from her hat to see who would be the leader of their favorite game, Simon says. She scrunched her eyes closed and jiggled the hat. Would it be Harry Hamster? Minnie Feet Mouse? Grizzle Frizz Guinea Pig? <gasps> Could it be big, mean, smart Camilla Capybara? Mrs. Fuzzleworth's paw reached in and pulled out the name of Wadney Wet. <gasps> the bell rang. There was a wild scurry for the door, and Camilla Capybara was the first on the playground, having trampled the others in her path. To Wadney, she looked especially scary. What would she do when she heard him speak? Breathe Capybara breath in his face? or tie him up by his own tail, <gasps> or even pounce on him. The tiny trembling leader of the game stood before the eager players, his head well inside his jacket and squeaked. Watney says weed the sign. While the other rodents read PS 142 Elementary School for Rodents, Camilla began pulling up weeds around the sign and wildly flinging them hither and yon till she was clear up to her teeth in dirt. The other rodents began to smile. Watney says, Wrap your paws around your head. He peeked a little peek out of his jacket and saw, whap, whap, whappity, slappity, slap. Camilla was whapping her paws around her head so hard, she became dizzy, gave herself a headache, and had to sit down. The other rodents couldn't help giggling. <laughs> Watney says, play wing around the woozy. Camilla put her arms out like wings and made airplane an airplane noise. Nair! But where was the woozy? What was a woozy? By now, Watney's voice was stronger and his head was entirely out of his jacket. Wake the leaves. Nobody moves. What he says. Wake the leaves. While Harry Minifeet and Grizzle Frizz and the others busied themselves raking, Camilla Capybara grabbed one leaf. Wake up! She yelled. She snatched another. Come on, you! Up, up, up! And another, rise and shine. And another, hmm, boo. By now, all the other rodents were squealing with laughter. But Camilla, who frowned, stupid leaves, they won't wake up. And why was everyone laughing at her? She thought, hmm, such bullies, hmm. Who's the real bully here, do you think? Yep, I think we know the answer to that. In a voice so strong, he had to hold his own ears. Wadney called, Wadney says, 
go west. The rodents collapsed in a happy heap for a rest. Go west. Camilla Capybara, feeling very smart that she could tell directions by the sun, said, All right, I shall go west. And then she added, So there. West she stomped forever. She was gone. And from that day on, the pupils of PS 142 Elementary School for Rodents never teased Wadney again. He was their hero. Away for Wadney Wat, they cried. Woo, woo, woody, toot, toot. What an awesome book. Now I want to go back to some of these pages. And I want you to make some frozen statues with your body to show the emotion that the character might be feeling. And then I'm gonna give you a line from the book to say, but I want you to say it in your character voice. What's your intonation? What's your pitch? What's your dynamic according to the character? First, we're gonna start off with the teasing of the other students. So I want you to maybe make the shape of a bully or somebody who might be teasing somebody. And I want you to say in your bulliest voice, what's your name, Wadney? Ready? You try it. Maybe try to say it more than once in a different way. One, two, three. What's your name, Wadney? And I want you to now unfreeze that statue and think about yourself as the character of Wadney Watt. Now we know that Wadney is very shy and it says that lots of times he would hide inside of his jacket. So do you think that Wadney would be a big standing statue or maybe he'd be smaller and curved up? That's up to you. How would you show somebody who's very shy and maybe even a little afraid? And I want you to say just the name Wadi Wat. Try it. One, two, three. Wadi Wat. And now I want you in the same voice, in Wadney's very shy and scared voice, to say a twain travels on twain tracks. One, two, three, go. Excellent. Did you use a really loud voice or a more quiet voice? Was your pitch super high or was it very low? It's up to you. Create your own character voice. I love that book. It's so good. It shows a hero. It shows that bullying gets you absolutely nowhere. So just be kind to one another. That's super important. It also shows us how we can use our voice to show that we're playing a character or that our character is having a certain feeling or emotion. And that's always a really fun part of playing a character is being able to change the way that you sound, the way that you look, the way that you move. Thank you for reading and acting with me today, my friends. And please remember, it's not actually sometimes what you say, but how you say it. So try to remember to say something really nice to somebody today in a really nice voice. Maybe even try to help them around the house. Do something nice for someone. And don't forget to wash your hands. I'm gonna sing my goodbye song now. Goodbye, friends. We'll read together again. Until then, don't drive your grown-ups crazy.